it's us back again guys for another review and today we're going to be looking at the, the next version of the Mephesto tank from El Diablo. This is it here, this is the one that I uh, did the review on previously is now back with its owner and um, was with the 22mm with the copper, or it was a, a copper sleeve around there to control the AFC and this is now the 24mm version of the RD itself and I have to say it's absolutely stunning to look at it looks very much like the um, if you've seen like the old the old West revolvers you know you've got the scrolling I'll just show you all the scrolling and it, it's it's not completely rounded either you know you've got a you know it's kind of straight edges in there as well it looks like this. If this was obviously the the part of the gun that would hold the bullets, it's kind of got that kind of feeling to it, that kind of old west kind of feeling to it. And so obviously the engravings for Mephisto there, and by El Diablo. So with the deck on this one, it's 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 identical identical to the other deck that was in the previous twenty two millimeter version. Um, don't I, which I will show you guys in just a wee second. Can I be quite vape here? Um, oh, there's a there's a couple of different designs designed that I've noticed using this over the last couple couple of days that I'm obviously going to bring to light as well. And uh, just to let you know, this is an authentic. I have seen the authentication card for it. Um, shown to me by my colleague at work. Dom18650 who is also a subscriber and fantastic colleague to work with. So just give us a wee quick wipe. So down the bottom here you have your 1040 which is the uh, is your serial number. There's nothing else real estate wise on the bottom apart from this Delrin piece here and the unusual thing about this is this actually comes off. So I have a feeling this is very much like um the anima that I had done a review on a couple of days ago, the, this, I'm just giving this a wipe so I can have a better look at it. This is very much like the anima, I have a feeling that this was meant to go into either, um, go into like a, me a mechanical mod. Because obviously this, this is massively protruding, you know, not the, the 510 pin, but the actual stock itself here is massive. So there's no real estate on there and all the all the, the watermarks are for me because I've been using it right up until about an hour ago. Um making sure I get the, the best out of it. So when it comes to the coil placement on it that I'll do later. You know, you I'll make sure that you guys are gonna be seeing the best the best performance out of this RDA. So you've got the heat sick fins on the top there. I don't know if my camera's gonna catch them. So they've got heat sick fins. All the way around, just that scrolling is fantastic. It's so detailed, but really simplistic at the same time. You've got your airflow control system. So this is a single coil here, and you've got so this. It sorry, this is it on its single coil, and it does have dual coil configuration as well. You do is spin this piece of the barrel, which is independent of the RDA, as you can see there. So that's the single coiler there and there and it's open it's quite actually quite an airy art you know for a 24 millimeter it's actually very very airy so if you just bear with me a second i'm just going to get this onto a mod my forever reliable top side light this is what i've been using it on this and the invader 4 just to see what it'd be like um with pulse with modulation as well so, as you can see, uh, I'll have left the coils in there, but I'll be taking them out very, very shortly. The The deck itself is very, very old school. It's still that kind of, you know, you've got your two negatives and then your positive in the middle. So your positive leads share, share, share the one, share the one post. Um, I haven't had, had any issues with it. Maybe the only thing I would say in regards to 
the RDA itself is when you're moving your moving the coil legs, make sure that you give yourself, you know, leave, you know, one of the positives at a time, slightly loose. So when you're pulling the, the coil into the middle, you're actually going to be giving yourself that little piece, you know, a little piece of wiggle room so that when you don't deform the coils too much. But let's say I grab my screwdriver. This now. Normally this wouldn't have anything in it, but like I said, I've been using it right up until about an hour ago. And I decided to get the review out for it. What the hell is going on here with my... There we go. So it's got a 4mm juice well in here. The... Where is that? Flathead screwdriver. Sorry guys, I'm a little bit unprepared, which is not like me. So it's got the, this is a 4mm as well as I just said. Um, one of the things I'm, I don't have any at the moment, but I think this could actually fit much bigger coils than what I, I have put in it and what I'm going to be putting in it. These um, little, I think these are actually Tiger coils, from what I remember. And they, they are a three millimeter, and when you've got the you've got the cap on, the airflow is still so immense that I think you could actually put much much bigger coils in it, maybe a four millimeter. Easy, because the uh, the juice well can definitely take it. I'm sorry for hitting the camera there. So let's get these out. threading on these are still fantastic there's no crunchiness you know considering this this came out i think it was roughly the same time as the original one the 22 millimeter still made out of three of three three or four graded stainless steel so it'll last longer than your teeth let's put it that way i'm just gonna give this a wee quick wipe so i can see with what i'm working with so there you go, the post holes on this are massive. And you can't, you know, you can turn these by hand if you really, really want to. Um, but, you know, some people are stuck in their ways and they just like to use uh, flat head screws. So what I'm basically going to be putting in it is slightly thicker coils. I don't have any anything larger than a 3mm um, at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put... 2.5s in but they're they're actually the coil the coils themselves are act, the material is denser these are ni80s whereas those were just canthal so all i'm going to do is not even going to speed it up it's pretty straightforward so one in there one on the other side like so Sorry if I sound a wee bit groggy today, guys. It has been a long day. And I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> That's pretty much it in a nutshell for me today. So just clamp these down. Nothing crazy. Just This is what I normally do when I'm moving the coils into position for this RDA. So if I just grab my 2.5 bit. checking the coil placement obviously I don't want a hard short hitting the outside of the chamber do the same with this one perfect let's grab my other screw sorry if my hand's getting in the way here right, this is where this might come in handy I want to obviously obstruct your view too much, guys. Here, but I'm because this is resin, it's uh, flopping all over the place. And if you do like this, um, it's actually my wife that made it. Uh, Stella Star Resin on Instagram. She actually is an abstract version of um, one of the backgrounds that I use on my Facebook page, which you can also go and follow. You can message me. I'm very approachable. If you have any questions or, um. Or even any comments that you have 
on here on YouTube. I'm very approachable. I'll, very, I'll happily answer any questions that you have when I have time. <laughs> it's because I've got children and children take up, my children take up a lot of my time. So I'll just quickly. No, and again, rule of thumb with these just don't because obviously it's one it's a slightly older you know older rda i'm not going to go too ham-fisted on the screws because if i break it not only am i out of pocket my colleague is probably going to kill me too and i don't want that so all i need to do now is go into the middle post Find that little excess bit that's hanging out. Give them a trim. I may need to lift this one up to, to do it. Yeah, I thought as much. Sorry if I'm not seeing too much, guys. I'm just, I don't want to hit that lead and end up cutting the other coil off. I really need to buy longer snips. There we go, that'll do. I hope you all had a nice weekend as well. You know, as much as we all can have us, you know, with the current shit storm that we're all in as well with the the pandemic as well. So let's get these coils bedded in. Um, as you can see, the, the, the other coils I put in were quite, they were bigger in size, but they were very narrow. So what I'm thinking is maybe more surface area across, you know, try and encapsulate that, the coil right in front of the big air slot. That's kind of what I'm going to be going for. So it's reading at, it's reading at uh, 0.20 and all I'm going to do now is just bed these coils in. Let's just bump this up just a wee bit because one of them is struggling slightly. We'll need to quick tighten again. There we go, that's it. There we go. So, all I need to do now is pop some cotton on here, uh, get my juice, which I have forgotten, so I'm going to pause the camera, I'll be two seconds. Right, sorry about that guys, I had to go grab some e-liquid, I had everything ready apart from the bloody e-liquid, can, e-liquid, can you imagine it? Right, so all I've got is some Cotton God's Cotton, I'm not a sponsor, I just like them, and all I'm going to do is if I just, let's say I lower this to that so you can see the coils going in. Yay, there we go. Much better. So cotton gods and the best the best way to actually do it is just feed it through. If you get a bit of resistance, just twist it. Twist. By the time you start to pull it back through it'll it'll start to fluff up again. Like so. Grab in the other one. And do the other side. There we go. Twist. 
I remember who it is I've seen who does that trick, but it works every single time. It means that the cotton doesn't jam up inside the inside the inside the coil, and it's works every single time. I can't remember who it was, so whoever it was, and if I do remember, I'll put it in the in the description. But for the moment, I can't remember. But because the coils are going to be quite high up, um, I'm doing it intentionally because I kind of want the the airflow from the from the actual barrel itself to actually hit the coil dead on. So all I'm going to do is there's a rim just here where the top cap actually slams onto the the bottom part of the deck, and that's where I'm going to cut it. Let's do all four of them the same. Pretty simple, pretty easy. There's nothing crazy that you need to do with that. Um, and the coil position with these, it's like, uh, th you know, smaller in diameter, but longer and denser in material. Um, I think this may be a little bit better, but and you know, for the saturation of of uh, for the cotton as well, because I felt like they were a little bit too low down in the last build, and. The um, <clears throat> the I felt like it was constantly oversaturated, not spit back, but you know it felt like I wasn't getting the best amount of flavour out of it. So there we go. And apologies, my daughter is in the room watching TV. Sorry about the other jump cut there, guys. Um, right, okay, where were we? We were back on the coiling of this. So all I'm doing is, before I say the jump cut, I was just thinning out the cotton on the other side. So I'm just gonna continue to do that. Sorry guys, my scissors fell apart there. Hold on a second. There we go. And all I'm gonna do is just cut all the ends off of it. Nice and nothing. I want to try and keep some of these little bits that stick out for capillary action. So, so the second that you drop liquid in it, the, the finer parts of the cotton on the bottom of the deck are just gonna grab onto that liquid. Right, so gonna wick this the same way that I would wick any other RD. I'm basically gonna do the dam method. So all I'm going to do is take the bottom end of the coil, uh, the cotton, sorry, and just drop it into the deck, like so. And just copy it on the other side. Because the, the deck itself is actually quite deep and it goes in between, you know, remember in the, the gaps in between the posts are part of the deck as well. Um, I don't believe you, you can squonk with this. I haven't seen anything like within the bottom of the deck to tell me that it's squonkable, but then again, if somebody who's, who's ever owned one of these can say that it has, then then fantastic. If not, then... I don't think squonking was kind of a big thing back in, you know, about, you know, four or five years ago. I think it was mainly just your mechs that were out and in your very basic um, egos, I think, at that time, and maybe die codes were around about that time, but nothing crazy. So, so that's the coil and cotton placement in. Let's pop some liquid on this. So 
Sorry, my daughter's trying to get my attention there. Sorry, guys. Right, so. So all I'm doing at the moment is just putting much, much love liquid onto here. It's a uh, zero nicotine at the moment, but it's the Punks range from Riot Squad, and it's the Black Current and uh, Black Current and Watermelon. It's very, very nice. It's not too. It's not too. Uh, you know, like cough sweet, like lockets or tunes, whatever. You know, I don't know what the American like American equivalent is, but like cold remedy sweets, it's more uh, on the fruitier side. It's actually much fresher, which is really really nice to to actually see. Because normally the second that they put these two flavors together, they literally cane it with, you know, coolie or with menthol, and with this, it's it's just raw fruit, like fruitiness, like fresh. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Right, so let's say, uh, so after popping the cot, the cotton and the coils is went down to point one nine. A couple of little pulses at fifty watts before I crank it up. Get the top cap itself. One of the things I'll mention a little bit later up is, as much as this can't cut you, um. I had a, a bit of an issue with it and it actually took a layer of skin off one of my fingers. I think it was actually this one. Uh, but apart from that, it's really the only issue I had this because the O-rings were dry. So you can see the, co the coil is just smack bang in front of that airflow. And on the perpendicular side, there it is just there. Now, the only thing, I, the only con I have with this really is it's a 510. But then again, I can excuse that because it's also an older dripper. So I've just grabbed one of the 510s that I have. But for the moment, let's take it off. So and that was the Mephesto 24mm by El Diablo. Let's take it up top. And I'll give you my final thoughts on this dripper. See you up there. And I'm back up the top with the Mofesto by El Diablo, the 24mm version in stainless steel. Right, let's have a wee, a wee quick vape on this and then I'll tell you my, my thoughts. Already from the older coils that you've seen down on the table cam, vast, vast improvement. Having the the coils bang on with the air the, these air slots are and they are massive for like an older RDA. I mean, I think you can actually see the coil on there just. It's, yeah, it's much much better. Let's turn this down just a wee tad. It's a wee bit too hot for me. There we go, that's much better. Right, so, pros, it looks absolutely fantastic. Sorry guys, it's, it looked absolutely fantastic. I love the, the old school heat sink fins that are on the top. I love the fact that you can do a single or a dual coil build in this. Obviously, I'm guessing it has another feature with that Delrin piece that's sitting on the bottom of the RD itself. I'm guessing it goes into another device, very much like the Anima does, like I said, down in table cam. Um, pr uh, the price for one of these at the moment, it still kind of eludes me. I've still seen people selling them for around about £80. I've still seen people sell them for more than that, so... Um, Definitely on the higher tier, uh, close to high end bracket, especially for a for a, an RDA, absolutely. Cons. Some of the edging on the on the barrel itself when I was taking the top cap off was a little bit sharp. I don't know if it's because the metal is so thin around the top cap, this piece that you can spin the airflow control with. And it is five ten. Those are really the only two cons that I have for it because 
I can excuse it because it's an older style RDA. But you know what, it's, if you've got a, an old spare 510 kicking around that you were quite fond of when you were doing mouth to lung, it ends up looking not too bad, so yeah. Yep, no complaints in flavour either. Um, what else can I say about this? It's super easy to build on. Like, you know, even back when, the, you know, RDAs were new, um, somebody obviously said, look, let's make this, you know, whoever designed this in the Philippines, and El Diablo just went, let's make it super simple, super easy and super clean to, to build on. Let's not make it too complicated. Let's not make it too fancy. And they definitely accomplished it with not just this, but with the 22 millimeter as well. You know, big thick grub screw, you know, um, screws in there as well. Um, the presentation box, which I'm still gutted I never got a hold of, so I could show you, it was absolutely lovely. Uh, but just type in Mephesto El Diablo and more than likely somebody will have a picture of it kind of sitting in. It looks like a little jewellery box. It's absolutely lovely. So. Would I recommend somebody to go out and buy this? Yeah. Absolutely. Even if you're not going to use it all the time, you're going to use it as a... A decorative piece, absolutely. You can. It's got a story behind it. It's it's old school, old school high end. And it hold. It's holding. Its engravings have all held up super super well. Um, my colleague has obviously looked after this and the other one really really well. She uh, she takes pride in her art, like especially her high end art. He is. Maybe because I'm, if I look after him so much, she might give me more to look after. <laughs> Cloud production is fantastic. But guys, this is where I'm going to love you, love you and leave you. Just remember, every single Friday night, we have Bargain Vapes. Where you'll find myself. You'll find the Skint Vapor, our new caster of Vaping Nomad, and the Vaping Heat. Um, and don't know who the guest is at the moment because this is being recorded on Saturday and Bargain Vapes has just been, this is the day after. Um, just, uh, just stay safe, you know, be respectful of others uh, during this lockdown situation. You know, we're all in the same boat, we're all petrified that we're either going to catch this uh, virus that's going around or we know someone that's going to be affected by it. Just, just be cordial to each other, you know. Wear, wear a mask, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you know, if you can't, I, I totally understand I'm, I'm exempt from wearing a mask, but if you have to wear a mask, wearing a mask for half an hour isn't going to kill you. Okay, so you guys stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.